Welcome to Friendly Frequencies, a podcast that will revolutionize your journey to greatness. My name is Carmen McLeod. I am traveling the world as an artist, tour guide, and life coach, documenting the powerful lessons that I learn about myself and what it takes to live a life of true happiness and freedom. Living outside the bounds of my comfort zone has brought me more joy and abundance than I ever could have imagined, and I aim to push you a bit further out of your comfort zone with each episode. Thank you for joining me on this journey of transcendent transformation. Welcome, welcome to the Friendly Frequencies podcast, everyone. I'm excited to welcome you into this beautiful conversation that I'm having with a very, very special person in my life. His name is Axel Gatane, and he is joining me on the podcast. And we're just going to have a conversation about so many different things. We get into some deep questions for each other, some powerful advice, and just a lot of powerful diamonds coming out of Axel's mouth. When when he's left to speak, he can just go on for so long about all the things that I are music to my ears, personally. And I think that there's so much wisdom behind what he's saying all the time. We also talk a bit about our relationship and how that's reflected in this divine masculine feminine idea uh, and embodiment. I really see that in us and I think it really reflects to me what a powerful relationship looks like. So without further ado, please welcome Axel Galtane to the Friendly Frequencies podcast. This um, this is Axel and I'm with Miss Frequency and uh, this is the Friendly Frequency podcast. <laughs> so we're going to talk randomly. This is the this is another special episode. Which is always a special episode for Carmen McLeod. Oh, you watch them. Yeah, so um, uh, with the special episode, is like this is a this is an episode that we actually don't have any topic. But yeah, please bear with me, guys. I'm uh, English is not my first language. So uh, by the way, I'm a Filipino. So uh, going back to all Carmen's. Uh, podcast you will know who's me so uh, you better listen to her previous podcast so you know a lot of details about me (laughs) I think I've mentioned you maybe once nah (laughs) not once (laughs) anyways let's see so let's uh, let's start with Carmen so what do you where are we now? Where are we right now? Maybe that's the thing that we can start where are we right now instead well we're in Chargao and I say, let's dive into some deep, deep Ooh. things, because that's what this podcast is all about. So let's jump in right away, all right? No, no time to waste. So tell me right now, uh, what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? It's the first question that came to my head. Well, I, I think I already told it to you, like this morning, this actually morning, like we've been listening about it. The magic that you are looking for is in the work that you are avoiding. Like uh, this, we are always caught up with uh, a lot of distractions lately. Like, for example, like me, you, 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 you caught me. Like, if I'm having a downtime, I'm always scrolling my things, but my my phone, and then everyone is. Everyone is just like distracted, doing uh, doing a lot of stuff. Like um, it seems like we are avoiding something. Ooh. Is that a sign that we still stopped it? So, <laughs> but it's like uh, with the, uh, with the work that we are avoiding. So I mean, that's the piece of advice I can give to everyone now. So, because Carmen would like to go deep on this conversation. So those are the, the, the that's the first advice that I would give. And also, the second advice is like, study constructive positivity. Or like, practice constructive positivity. So, uh, with regards to constructive positivity, because like, a lot of people now are too positive with, uh, with something, but they don't know how to time, to time to give positivity. So... There's a the constructive positivity allows someone 
to still uh, see the brighter side of something but not uh, covering or not filtering out or not denying the negative emotions around so it starts with everything so it starts with how you how you see yourself so if you practice mindfulness constructive positivity you get a long way to connect with people and look at you you're connecting you connected with me now always always uh, so you um so going back now so you're asking me what's the because this is so deep guys so uh, your your friendly frequency would like to be <laughs> on deep conversation and i just want to start it lighter no we're not starting light because we ain't got no time for that so we got no time nah, like time is a concept remember <laughs> you're the one who said to me that, yeah, that time is a concept yeah but you know that's just uh that's so, what i'm all about i like to dive it right in you know i meet somebody i say what are you passionate about or yeah if you could have an answer the answer to any question in the world what would it be i'm that person that's going uh, slapping someone in the face with a deep question too soon, but you know what? We're gonna do that now. Yeah. Uh, to so, be fair, to be fair, um, uh, for all the listeners and the viewers, it's like I first met Carmen to one con about like one sentence and one conversation that we have. So this is like uh, this is better that we discuss that. Okay, go. So on. we're uh, actually we're uh, we met in a party. It's uh, my uh, best friend's party, so shout out to Sean if you're hearing this. So uh, it's because of Sean I met Carmen. So during that birthday, I was having a conversation with Carmen and they, we stumbled upon a two specific word that Carmen caught, uh, uh, got caught on those <laughs> words. It's like uh, possibilities and probabilities. So, yes, uh, they said it's the same, but possibilities and probabilities are not the same. Who said it's the same? Like, we're, we're, are, we're kind of, like, uh, debating about it. Yeah, I don't think it was that any... I don't know, because there was some other, someone else was in our conversation as well. I don't think anyone thought they were the same, but I think we were on different sides of what we valued more. Yep. For me, like, I valued uh, pro uh, possibility and more than probability and Axel valued probability over possibility before we ever googled the words and looked into it because we we just just based on what we had this mental conception of these words yes. beforehand and it was I, I remember it was a good conversation even though we were drunk at a party we still had a good conversation about it and that's what made me think oh, I need to message this guy again uh, and the rest is history yeah but she messaged me <laughs> so you heard it like guys so she's the one who made the first <laughs> move <Simmered> <laughs> so uh, anyways keeping on track so okay the, the reason so for, for me the reason I valued uh, possibility is because it's kind of to do with the the training that I, the leadership training I've done because we talk about possibility a lot I think that did a lot to shape my viewpoint on possibility yes. because they're always talking about standing in possibility like anything is possible standing in possibility rather than putting limits on yourself and putting stories on yourself to um, yeah to like limit you from what you can do and so for me I'm always standing in possibility and so that was my my version of of what the, of why I valued that word more or I liked that word more and then do you want to give give us yeah, a like and uh, we already searched about it and my, my take about uh, when we first met is like I'm more on the probability because like the probability is just like uh, it's factual you can make it happen there's a there's a probability that I'm gonna see you next time it's not a possibility anymore because like yeah you already said like yeah you're coming back there's a possibility you're coming back there's a probability that you're coming back possibilities are based on beliefs probabilities is based on uh, uh, like a, a collected data that they, like uh, you're betting on it that's why if you're co you're coming to some like technical shit it will be like probabilities always there's no possibilities possibilities is kind of like uh, you're waiting for a miracle and like probabilities you already know that there's a data that, that can drive you to do to get that thing so there's a like uh, you know that there's a 
there's a train that's going to that and like the possibility is like the possibility of knowing the universe we don't have yet like we have now the data to analyze it but we don't know we don't have like the the depth the depth uh, knowledge to know what's the total secret of the universe or like what's what's behind of everything but scientific like um, we can say like possibilities are based on faith and probabilities are based on scientific and technical data so I'm more keen on uh, probabilities because I know if I work on it I can make it happen with possibilities yes I can make it happen that's why last time I told you like let's see if we can turn a possibility to probability how you can turn a possibility to turn to turn to a probability you put you put something to measure it and then you put some you put some steps on how you you will make it like uh, more on the proper probability side for example when you say like yeah it's a possibility that we will met again but how we will met again so we did this like yeah I'm coming for the next two weeks I'm com I'm gonna see you this time I'm gonna see you this time so it's just you're turning possibilities to probabilities by uh, appointing a schedule or by when by when my favorite so, question so it's like because like when you just uh, have this you say yeah there's a possibility that we're gonna we're we're, we're, we're gonna see each other but by when mm -hmm. so when you put that word there's some words that you can use to solidify that it would be a probability and like just like merely saying like yeah it's possible that we see yeah well i don't know when yeah so so that's a, like it, that's the thing that you gonna first say yeah yeah but i don't know when so in order for that possibility to be a probability you say by when mm -hmm. so this is one thing so we're jumping to another topic now by when the by when by when my favorite question so yeah and my favorite example and this is the example that i give to a lot of people but because you know I, i'm always asking people by when uh whenever somebody is telling me um, and I also got this from the same leadership training and a shout out to next level but it's like whenever someone's telling me about something that they want a goal they have or a vision or things I for some things I'll say okay by when someone if someone keeps talking about uh, you know like like for actually you said uh, so I think at some oh, point yeah. you've no. since I've been here you said that you want to learn Spanish you said this to me a few times yep. so after the fourth time I heard you say something about wanting to learn oh, Spanish yeah. I said okay by when will you start to learn Spanish yes. that's when I like to pull it out when I hear somebody that really wants to start doing something and I know it'll stay just an idea in their head but my example that I like to give people is about you I always bring you up in this situation because it was such a beautiful example of uh, a few times ago I came to Chagall to see you and uh, when I was leaving, or yeah, just before I left, you you said, okay, I'll come see you in Thailand. And uh, yeah, this is the Filipino that came to see me in Thailand. I think I mentioned that on one of my episodes. <laughs> yeah, you but, saw me probably but, in the Instagram now. But yeah, but, and so when he said, I want to come see you in Thailand, so I said, okay, by when? And he said, by your birthday. And what happened? He came to see me for my birthday. So if, if I didn't ask by when, I don't know, surely, it, I mean, maybe it would have happened, maybe not. It would have been a possibility, but it, it, when, yeah, when uh, asking by when, it doesn't mean that you're set on the date. You don't have, you're not bound to that by when. You're just, it's just a mental frame in your mind for your mind to say, ah, okay, there's a direction here. Now I'm going to do what it takes to make this happen. And so that's how I see it by when. So and yeah, I use it. and it would with that transition that when we say the by when see how it it transcends the possibility to become a probability so and after that when we say the by when we said i set a smart goal mm -hmm. so like it's not gonna be easy for me to go to thailand by that time because i don't specifically haven't renewed my passport i'm not leaving the island i'm not i didn't left the island for the last three years so I need to renew my passport, uh, get a ticket. Those are like uh, we discussed this, like um, uh, misfrequency. Uh, 
I got it Miss Frequency sometimes <laughs> on the podcast now. But uh, yeah, she is uh, Sunshine. I call her Sunshine. So yeah, you're, you will hear it a lot now. So yeah, to the people that's going to he- listen to this he podcast lives. soon. Um, you can call her Sunshine, please. <laughs> like comment Sunshine. When, when she posted this podcast, I would like you, when you hear this specific line, Please comment sunshine. And I'll be happy to see sunshine comments. Oh my god! So, um, going back is like we set this is smart goals. So, can you uh, can you give another like um, can you give a short um, uh, description or definition of the smart goals? How? Because I I forget the exact uh, acronym of it. Yeah, yeah. The smart goals stands for specific, measurable. Uh, the A is sometimes different. Sometimes people, attainable. people say attainable, some say achievable. It's um, same, same, same thing. But there is, okay, and then smart uh, R is realistic, which yeah. also is sometimes relevant. Realistic and relevant are actually two different things. Oh, yeah. And then T is time bound. Time bound is the by when. Yep. But so for me, like, uh, the realistic, for me, just in my own uh, personal way of using this, I don't, the, the realistic, or uh, achievable, attainable, those things are good to like, keep in mind. Of course, I'm not going to set a goal that is like so out of my, one, out of my vision or out of alignment with who I am is one. And I'm also not going to set a goal that's absolutely not possible. But for me, it's like, yeah, of course, I'm always standing in possibilities. So for me, those are small things, but I'm mostly just focused on two things the specific and time bound if it's specific or sorry but yeah specific measurable and time bound um so mostly measurable and time bound so time bound is when is it going to be done so that you actually get it done and then the measurable is most important as well because how will you know that you've done it those are the two actually that i focus on the most i think if you just focus on those two i think it's it's, the most it's actually powerful. helpful it it's is, like yeah. everything is like uh, when when you have the buy when and you have you know you you become specific the rest of the part of the smart goal comes into life like it's it will follow like when you say it's specific it's if it's specific it's already measurable yeah it's true I most of the yeah. time yeah and then if it's like uh, i think like if it's measurable it's the, most of the time it's attainable so i think in order to have this smart goal, you just need to do the first part and the last part. The specific, which is the S, and then the T, the time bound. When you have the specific goal to have and when you would like to have it, the rest in the middle of those things comes into life yeah. one by one, which is what I do last time. It's like when, when, when we talk like, yeah, I'll, I'll probably see you on your birthday. Because, uh, yeah, just to just to let you know, because she went to my birthday first, and I said, yeah, it will be better for me to go to your birthday. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, you make me happy when you come come back here in my birthday. So uh, uh, I just want to make the people uh, people listening to have some butterflies in their stomach right now. So, cute. so yeah, <laughs> it will be a laughing like. They will, they will probably enjoy this now, but I, no, no one. I don't really care if they're gonna enjoy listening to my voice. But go. guys, this is like uh, my first time to doing podcast, so bear with me. You're doing really good. You're doing really good. So around the smart goals, you brought up the smart goals. So do you want to talk about any of your current smart goals, or do you want to talk about a time where you set a smart goal, you achieved it? Well, I'm, cur- I'm currently like uh, when we last talk is like there's two smart goals that I have for the for the half of the year. It's going to your birthday and then developing the house that I'm renovating. And uh, the only smart goals that I have is the renovations now that I'm doing for my house, which is like uh, one by one. It's like getting better and better. It's like um, you know, I'm also doing a lot of uh, projects along the way, so having a smart goal for this but yeah now that we're talking smart goals i should put a smart goals for our for for my work because most of the smart goals i'm doing is for my personal life Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah. Ah, you make me realize something. Yeah. I'll discuss this. So, if well, I'll discuss it with my team now. Okay. So good. yeah. Yeah. So um, um, if Orly and Jay is listening to this, so yeah, <laughs> be ready. We're gonna talk about it <laughs> when we when we have our meeting on Monday. So yeah. Yeah. Good. So yeah. So going back, so by setting those smart goals, I was able to visit Carmen because like I first like first get my passport, get a ticket. It's on a checklist. It's actually on my journal. So ah yeah. So now. <laughs> Sorry, like um, I'm apologizing now for the listeners. Like um, we're going topic to topic, but uh, especially this one is like uh, Carmen and I share a a love for making uh, journals. So we have this journal prompts that we are like always uh, discussing every time. So I me me I've, I've been busy so. I didn't catch up with the, some of the journal prompt, actually most of the journal prompt, and she's been like, she's uh, uh, her journal is already <laughs> full and mine is like halfway there. But yeah. can we can we check the journal? So, you want to check a journal prompt? Yeah, well, like we can we you can show what? the journal. Guys, my journal's right here. So yeah, I'm my journal. Gonna... We're just gonna get grab our journals. Should I uh, p- just pick a random question? Yep. So yeah, I'm gonna. Where's my journal? Wait. We're ju- we're just grabbing our journals, so yeah. I'm gonna take the first question that I see. Um, okay. Let's show Ooh, them I just, first. Wait, I just landed on my favorite question, you guys. Okay, yeah, these are our journals. These are our those journals. Those of you who are watching, it's mostly uh, listening. But okay, I'm gonna. Oh, but actually, no, I don't think you answered this question. I love this answer though. I'll give you guys yeah, this I mean, question another we can day. Talk, we can you can choose a random one, and I choose a random one for me. Okay. We don't okay. need we don't need to answer the same thing, so Okay. I think this one might be too good. I wanna make it its own episode actually. Maybe I'll save that one. It's too good. Okay, so I'll just answer what meaning do I want to give this circumstance in my life? I I don't know if this is one that let's see. I'm an open book, let's do it. Yeah, I don't know what that. I answered for this one. Okay, the answer I, I put. The meaning I'm giving to all circumstances in my life now and moving forward is service to others. Lewis Howe's podcast gave me some beautiful insight around this. His guest said, anytime we are feeling self-conscious, the problem is that we are too focused on ourselves. If I am worrying about or looking... S- sorry. If I am worrying about looking stupid or people judging me when, when public speaking, I will likely not do as well because I'm focused on myself. As soon as I remember why I am doing it and place the attention on the people I am serving, I will flow more naturally because I am no longer the center of my attention. Service to others and being are the only two meanings I can think of to life. Ooh. So with your take about that is like what meaning do what what do what meaning do i want to give this this circumstance in my life yeah you know this was i'm glad i picked this one because actually this was a really uh, this actually changed a lot of things for me re- listening to this podcast i wish i remember the name of the guy who gave me this advice but it was on lewis howe's podcast the school of greatness and this actually i think was helpful for me and also i was able to help hopefully help some some of the girls that were in my last tour actually uh, because uh, they're all influencers and so they all especially just as women and as also women who are like very in the public like they definitely have a lot of uh, insecurities and um, self-confidence issues regardless of being the most beautiful and successful women right like it's it's, it's so that's I just how it is for remember, most women like, always remember when I said to you it's like no matter what how people showcase themselves how perfect they are. Every human is flawed. It's one thing you should put, you should have in your in your in your um, to remove in your perception about people is like every every human is flawed, and uh, that's how you. So you can you can take this as what it is, and it's like uh, you you can more like um, express yourself if you know that yeah every human is flawed. In some point, you cannot uh, like. That's that's the beauty of it, you know. Like, imagine if the world is so perfect, there's no poor, there's no rich, there's like 
or there's no there's no there's there's no contrast like there's no there's like everything is perfect it will be a boring world to live in so imperfection is the is the secret recipe of life so if you remove imperfection you will never appreciate quality life amen it's always like that it's always like me is like if uh, the, uh, we already talk about this so I based on your journal now I come up with this topic that we already discussed it's like the polarity of everything you will never appreciate it or appreciate all the good things in life if you never experience some bad situation in your life so that's why you will always need to say that like you will always need to feel that yeah all the struggles in your life defines who you are right now and me if i already told you last time if i will go back if i will give it a chance to go back and try to change something or like i will still choose the path that i choose to get here right now because this makes me who i am right now and I love who I am right now. I'm literally at peace with everything. I'm more, I'm more calm right now. And I'm, 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 I'm I've been to worse feelings every time. I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm a devel- uh, I de- I'm, I'm still, I'm continuously developing and growing. Um, one thing I'm dedicated is a, a lifelong learning about life. Lifelong learning about my, my purpose lifelong learning about the things that I'm excited to learn which is I have a ton of things to learn and I want to learn it as, as long as uh, I have time here mm-hmm. so it's like this is the thing that I need to morally think about so you what's the polarity in your life that you exa- like example in your polarity that's, that's been instrumental all your struggles also well there's a big polarity going on between you and me hmm. actually i think it's very it's very much like what we were talking about before that made me think about this uh something about this in our conversation earlier on the podcast something was making me feel like ah like the possibility versus probability actually that, that reflects in the polarity of okay. you and me as people as a man and a woman and i see it in our just in the our interaction and our relationship is like you are the i so i talk to sometimes i talk to axel about how really i see the divine masculine and divine feminine in us and i see him as i see him as very you know because he's talking about the the probability you know the facts and the the you know the science the facts and like the he's the the stable rock foundation and i see myself as the possibility the i'm gonna go travel the world and change the world and do these things and uh, like i have all of this like and it's really up in the air and i'm changing my mind all the time i'm dance like and i literally you can physically see the polarity like i'm dancing i'm shaking my ass i'm just doing these things i'm running all over the place it's chaos and that's literally what the divine fe- that's what feminine is is like the, it represents the chaos and the masculine represents the the sub- stability and i see that in our relationship you're very stable you're here you're uh, you're here for whenever i'm ready to come back and i just keep coming back and uh that's the, the most polarity that that i think we could possibly experience right and it, it's a beautiful one it, rather than uh some of the polarity is not easy well this isn't easy either but like feeling the well, with that comes the dark and the light. Yeah. We're gonna go through the highest and the lowest when it comes to even just this relationship. With yeah, each other. We're, we're well. We're coming back to the dark and the light. Imagine you was born, and you're blind, and you never see light. Do you think you know what light is? No. Because there, you haven't seen the light. So you do it like, for example, you will never appreciate all the sunny days of your life. You don't experience. The rain, uh, if you don't experience rainy days. So it comes like uh, everything happening now or in the future or in the past, everything is now. And it's like, it's just what, what you have. It's just be like, be, be kind of positive that it will work out. But 
be also ready. That's there's sort of things. Uh, be re- realistic. Because mm-hmm. like um, this is always happening when Carmen is like moving around. I always tell them to uh, t- tell her like you're you're always moving around, Carmen. And it's like I'm always like yeah, I'm the garden, you're the butterfly. So what what it means like me i i'm a garden it's like um i'm i'm cultivating myself every time carmen is the butterfly that's moving around and like the chaos so that's uh that's the polarity we have <laughs> and um well this is this is uh, I, i'm telling you last time about this like it takes a lot of chaos to be this gentle so i hope you understand that it's that's just me it's the, like so calm right now this calmness there's the polarity of this calmness those calmness this calmness comes from a chaotic part of my life before so this is this is always you see when you see this is why I I want you to always remember when you see someone that's so calm so so um, kind of knows like a, can carry himself and like kind of assertive in many ways it's like it takes a lot of courage for him to or like it takes a lot of like a chaotic part of her life problematic mess up part he been there or like she been there for that and then now she's on the peaceful side mm-hmm. that's like uh, the ups and downs of uh, the uh, like uh, of your life it's human nature it's like yeah, uh, it's it's actually u- not human nature. It's kind of like if you if we will put something about the universe, also it's like it's the like if we scientifically base how the u- universe can come into come into life, it starts with a bang. It start it's it it started with a chaos. It's like a big bang, and it's like it's keep on expanding. But what happened while they're expanding? It becomes like synchronizing now everything is synchronizing like imagine why the planets our planets earth and everyone is not like colliding each other because it's it's uh while they're expanding it's like giving us like gravity it's giving us like it's more of like it's more on the synchron- synchronized way so mm-hmm. there's an article about this if you can search it more deep into that like there's a science about chaos so chaos is as essential in life and me is like when I see something chaotic about my life I'm excited <laughs> and I see like oh, fuck there's something chaotic here what this could uh, bring does what what could this thing will bring me I just said basically the same thing in my last episode I love that yeah. basically what you just said love that okay continue. it's like every everything that's happening it's like sometimes life moves so fast and it's like, ooh, it's too chaotic right now. And um, when I'm just observing, it's like, ooh, it's synchronizing again. <laughs> That's why the the best practice is like, like sometimes the best practice is no reaction. Just observe. And just observe everything that's happening. Because sometimes when you give reaction to things that doesn't need the reaction, it becomes messed up. Like, like for example, a still water... And then you put put your finger on it, it will be like give it, like put a ripple a ripple effect. So sometimes if you're enjoying the peace, don't try to complicate it. Life is too already complicated to complicate it. So I already mentioned to you about it before. Like yeah, it's don't complicate things. Cause it's already complicated. And also, what I've said to you is like life is meant to be experienced. Yes, this is why I love that you're exploring and then life coaching, exploring this, transcending things. Like uh, you, you always try to learn new things about spirituality, and that's what I love about you. But sometimes I'm always saying to you is like those things needs to be experienced. And me. I learn a lot based on my experience. I'm and I'm not done learning. And uh, as I like like I said to you when we when I read something on my journal last yesterday I think 
<laughs> when I tell to you, it's like, I am dedicated to a lifelong learning. I will never be perfect. I will never be right all the time. So, ah, it comes to me. We dis- we discussed this about the right and wrong, the b- the good and the bad. We haven't had this conversation in a long time. Yeah, we have, like in the bridge. When we talk about the, ba- like, you know, the, on, yeah, one, uh, one, one of the places I take you is on yeah, the bridge. A long, a long time ago this was. Yeah, okay, go like on. The, 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 there's no right or wrong. It's mostly how you, it's based somehow, all our judgment are based on our upbringing, based on our past traumas, based on our experience. Ba- the, most of the things are like uh, bad or wrong. The, like we just target bad or wrong based on uh, our experiences or like traumas and everything that happens in our life but I, in that in that uh, specific uh, conversation we have at the bridge I mentioned to you but there are universal truths mm-hmm. so there's good and bad and universal truths which is the universal truths are based on principles so let's say uh, what can I say like the sun is uh, the sun is re- the sun uh, the earth is revolving on the sun? Can you say it is bad? It's true or not? It's true. Is, is oh, sorry, it right or wrong? The, it is not true. It is not true. The, the earth is revolving. Oh, the earth is no. Okay, the earth is revolving the sun. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So those things is like if you say it's if you say it's wrong, that's the universal truth that we already have. But other stuff is like ah, it's. It's wrong for you to, uh, for example, to eat this food. Like, for example, you take, um, let's say, um, uh, this is my perception about uh, substance. So, when you take uh, any uh, addictive substance, people will tag you wrong. There's some people that will tag you right, like or not right. I mean, it, it, it destroying yourself, but. Maybe, um, no, let's don't put on this uh, addictive substance. Maybe let's start with the alcohol. Like when somebody tells you, like, it's good for you, it's good for you to not drink. And like, and then you give the, you give the person like a perception, yeah, it's bad to drink. No, there's no, there's, it's not bad to drink. It depends on how you use the drink, on how you, how you utilize the drink to, in your life. If you use the drink as a coping mechanism to avoid all the things that you need to process, yes, it's bad. But if you use the drink to socialize, to be with your friends, to make make uh, good memories about your 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 uh, your life, it is not a coping mechanism. It is additional in your life to make it more uh, enhancing. Like uh, socializing is like with drinks is better. It's like, but if you use it as a coping mechanism, as a escape, because this is what, uh, this is how I see people that get uh, get into bad situation about addictive uh, substances. Like they use it, uh, they use it as a escape. They use yeah. alcohol as an escape. And don't everything that you use as a escape. What can you like? We can. We're, we're gonna put you in bad, and then, and then everything that you use as like recreation, everything that you kind of like feel that's like, it's just for you to enjoy. That's why it's always starts with the intention. If you had this intention, that's why I, I'm not putting it as bad or wrong. It always starts with the intention. So, remember. That's why. My take for bad or uh, like if it's right or wrong, there's no right or wrong. It's just based on your intention. Your intention on why you're doing those things or why you tag that as wrong or not. Mm-hmm. And based on your upbringing also, past trauma and experience. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, people are always uh, now a kind of langa. They kind of always arguing with other stuff who's right or wrong. I'm not onto that. I'm mostly analyzing the other side and what the other side is saying, and I can make my quick judgment. Yeah. I no, not my quick, but like my thorough judgment. Maybe, maybe I'm not. I'm. I'm. 
I'm wrong also about what I'm, what my perception about that topic or anything. Because mm-hmm. I'm, remember I already told this like I'm flawed. The first thing to solve, like the first thing to solve or an issue or concern is to acknowledge that we doesn't know anything. Mm-hmm. Me, if if you tell me if I know things, I merely touches a a lot of ideas that I should touch. So it means it gives me more more uh, excitement to learn a lot of things. Uh, I remember now a quotation. I'm, I'm not sure if it's Aristotle. The more you know, the more you doesn't know. Ah, that's don't what know. I was about to say. I was waiting for a chance to say it. I love yeah, the it. More you don't, the more you know, the more you don't know. Yeah, that's why. Totally. Yes, it's it's easy to give to get uh, judgment about what's happening in someone's life, the, it or like a situation. It's easy to give. That's why it's easy to complain. It's easy to judge. People are, uh, of course, it's convenient to say to judge and complain. Yeah, so and blame. That's why um, I'm always telling you, like I'm cho- always choosing hard. Like it's hard to understand, and it's hard to comprehend. It's hard to like uh, uh, sympathize, but those things I think is based on principles. So we're coming, we're we're going now to this topic that is like there's no right or wrong. Those are just our perception based on our our bringing, our traumas, our our past problems, our past. But those things can be solved if you're like, if you just open your, open your heart to, to be more like, um, uh, to be more acceptance, acknowledging that you are, you doesn't know anything. Open your heart to possibility. Yes. You don't know, like, you, I mean, opening your, opening your mind that you doesn't know anything. It's like, I'm merely touching any ideas now. Even you, as like you, you are in your pursuit of like getting this spirituality, and like um, more of like helping people, life coaching people. You know, I, the dynamic that I want to see from you is like every people that you are coaching, you're learning something from them. Always. So every people that you're gonna meet, be excited to them. I'm always excited when I meet people, cause like yeah, what this, what this person could bring. Yeah. Like uh, for example, in the shop, in the workshop, it's like, I told, did I told you there's like, yeah, the the people like uh, from Roots, like uh, yeah, shout out to them if they're listening also. Uh, I I shout out a lot of things now, but uh, for for them it's like I'm always excited when they're going to the shop because I was like yeah when they message me can we go to the shop we're gonna like where I have something to order, I'm always excited to see them because like. I'm looking for what they could bring, ideas they could bring on the workshop. So I hope you have that, like approach in life. It's like always be excited to see people, to know people, or to see an idea. Because everything starts with the excitement. Mm -hmm. And how you will get excitement is by allowing yourself to accept what's happening and allowing yourself to be um, a student. We are all students here. I'm still learning a lot. And I, I, if you say, if you if we will quantify what I'm learning, it's like I'm I'm still on the twenty percent. I doesn't know anything. Maybe some people people say I know a lot of things, but on that particular thing only. But there's a lot of things to learn about life, learn a lot about the world, learn a lot about people. And those are exciting things to, to do. Mm. It makes you feel alive and liberated about, about life. Meet them. So, well, I just want you to know what's. I just want to know what's your take. Wow. Okay. Well, you guys can really see why uh, Axel is my life coach, <laughs> the life coach of the life coach. Uh, what is my take? You just covered like 20 different things that I that I've, uh, I had my fingers crossed like five different times <laughs> to remember. Well, I want to touch on what he's saying there, but then you could do something else. Well, but yeah, you know, that's literally me, guys. <laughs> I'm the I'm the 
see i stop her uh, that's a that's a that's a actually she's uh, she's kind of frustrated when we're talking she's just like yeah she's eye contacting me it's like i about to say something but i forgot now it's like you you jump to another topic that's like interesting and another interesting topic yeah but yeah i hope you find like well to the listener i hope you find someone that you can have those conversations and it's like it feels like time not time doesn't move so that time doesn't move or time is just doesn't exist because those are the best conversation you will have it's like i like to do conversations basically to the people that's very open about any ideas under the sun and even under the moon mm-hmm. and you you have great ideas my dear thank you so what's what's the greatest idea this is now i i what was the best thing that you learned from me oh my gosh okay let's we'll wrap it up with this question because i do have to get to my flight after this the best thing that i learned from axel oh my gosh putting me on the spot oh taking time huh i'm trying to uh, uh, there's uh, there's two and i'm trying to decide which one i want to say um one is that axel has taught me you have taught me to remind me not to rush with things i actually made a whole episode about this that was inspired by you and it's giving me it's given me just a reminder to enjoy enjoy each moment and to take my time and for me it's like i'm balancing that with my fast tracking and my uh allowing things to move at a, a fast pace while myself being at this kind of still place where even if the world around me is moving very fast i'm still not rushing on the inside i'm being here and here and now and i'm enjoying and that's a big thing that i hear your voice in my head a lot if i'm ever feeling like i'm rushing things i hear axel's voice i and i don't hear him like he's telling me not to rush usually he's never telling me that he's just saying i'm not rushing I'm not rushing because you're just speaking about yourself. I'm not rushing with everything. And so I just hear your voice in my head saying, I'm not rushing. And then for me, I say, okay, I'm not rushing either. Um, yeah, I think that's a big thing that I learned from you. And uh, I yeah. told you, it's we're just borrowing time here. Why you rush? Yeah. Like when you borrow something, sometimes you want to keep it for a while. So why rush? Exactly. So yeah, shout out to my friends also. <laughs> I'm very sorry I'm always late. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not rushing. That's my that's my thing. I take my time. Yeah, Filipino so, time. This is uh this is I think for everyone that's listening now, maybe we, we we kind of need to wrap it up now. But for everyone that's listening right now, one thing I would like you to take on this episode, this special episode. It's like take your time as much as you want because you will you will always you only get once life you will get one life only so treasure the moments that you are with the people that you love or you with the people that you allow to surround you take the moment to eat the food that you always want to eat take the moment that you that you are doing your job. Take the moment that you are doing uh, doing the things that you love, like doing the passions that you love. No one is rushing you. No, you you, you make your make time is your uh, make time your ally, not your enemy. If you make time your ally, you will have a best exciting extraordinary life <laughs> amen because i'm like that's the thing that i want to end on this podcast episode that is, was amazing take take your fucking time <laughs> just be still and allow yourself to be bored yeah actually yeah okay yeah that's like yeah Take your time and allow yourself to be bored because 
When you're bored, that's where great ideas come. It's true. That's meditation right there. Allow yourself to be bored. Meditation is boring. Well, yeah, but now... You're allowing yourself to I'm, be in I'm that. I'm telling you, like most people now doesn't allow themselves bored. Look at me. Sometimes it's like... Yeah, so most people. Like I'd say 99% of people, if you're bored ever and you have any spare mo- minute of time, you're going to go on your phone because you're bored. So that's a good... I think that's a good reminder is like allow yourself to be bored when you're bored that means you're just in stillness and stillness is not always fun I, yeah yeah I remember now like there, I've heard this like uh, it's, it, I, I'm not sure I know, I'm not sure how to pronounce it le- right but it's like dulce penye the art of doing nothing that is the art of doing nothing is um, uh, oh no wait what is it we talk about it in DNA yeah. I think, and it's like a Taoist concept. Wu Wei is that Wu Wei? I'm poor God, but it's no, like Wu Wei is like an effortless flow. They they do no, chip and it? niente. Oh. It's like I forgot how to pronounce it right, but it's like the art of doing nothing. It is. It's beautiful, and that's my favorite art of all. It's my favorite thing to do in the whole world. Yeah. So, in any case, like um, um uh, your friendly frequency will take a flight around 4 p.m. So. <laughs> So I'll, I'll, I'll drop her on the airport. She's she's going to Sagada right now. See, she's a butterfly. She's moving around. <laughs> but yeah, this is not be the last episode that you will hear my voice. But uh, I'm. Wait, there's an alarm. <laughs> it's alright. Well. Well, I mean, again, I'm I, I'm leaving you. This is Axel, and. Thank you for listening to the Friendly Frequency Podcast. Woo! Thank you for joining me, Axel. You're amazing. And this has been beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, love you guys. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Friendly Frequencies Podcast. I would absolutely love it if you could leave me a review on iTunes and also Spotify or wherever you're listening to the podcast through. And what I will do is for anybody that leaves me a review and sends me a screenshot through Instagram, I will personally send you my 30 plus hour playlist. This playlist is very special to me. It has been crafted by me for the last three years and I've never met a person who does not love it. And this is just another way that we can be beautifully connected through creativity. So send me a picture of your review. My Instagram is Friendly Frequencies. And I cannot wait to share this music with you. And thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you for listening and for supporting me along this journey. I appreciate you. I love you. And have a good one. I'll see you next week.